Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video where we try to help you finish in the top 5% globally just by following these simple instructions and it's kind of going all right so far I think for people that are following it and it's a double game week so there's a chance of getting some decent points hopefully. Let's see how game week 33 could have gone and then what our plans are for game week 34. Starting with the goalkeepers you would have played one of these six. De Gea got two, Raya for nine, Ramsdale 1, Pope 3, Kepper 1, Meslier 2. So that's an average of 3 points for your keeper. Your defenders would probably have had two, of th two or three of these playing. Trent who got 5, Van Dyke 2, Trippier 2, Chilwell 1, James didn't play, he's probably out for the season. Shaw 1, Gabriel 0, Zinchenko 0. So a rather disappointing 3.1 points for those two defenders. Of these defenders, you might have played two or three of these. Me for six, Estupinen for one, Aguard for one, Botman for two, Pinnock for six, Castagna for two, Fafana for zero, Canate for didn't play. <laughs> so he didn't get anything. So an average of 5.1 from this page. Midfielders, you'd have had a couple of these, maybe three. Salah for two, Fernandez for five, Saka for two, Madison for 6, Grealish for 1, Gakpo for 10, Rashford for 12, Odegaard for 2. That's an average of 10 points. Of these midfielders, you'd have had 2 or 3 of Martinelli for 1, Gibbs White for 7, McAllister 2, Mitoma 2, March 5, Jensen for 2 and Somerville for 1. Average of 5.7. So you may have seen it's been quite a low scoring week so far. Forward, you'd have had one or two of these, hopefully. Haaland, 14. Kane, 11. Darwin, 1. Jesus, 2. Tony, 2. Felix, 1. An average of 5.1. And for the other striker, you might have had one or two of these. Watkins for 2. Isaac for 1. Ings for 1. And Buemo for 6. And Johnson for 0. That's an average of 2. And then, of course, there's the captain. Which captain did you play? So we add their points in again because captain's points gets doubled. You'd have had one of Harlan for 14, Kane for 11, Salah for 2, Rashford for 12, Watkins for 2, one of the Brighton boys, and they scored 2, 5 and 2. So that was an average of 5.3 for your captain. The global average this week was low. On a normal week, 60 points is a good score. And the globally it was 55, so a little bit below that. The <laughs> If you'd picked the worst possible starting 11 from this system, you could have got nine points if my calculations are correct, which seems a bit strange. I don't know if that is possible. I've not checked. Maybe I'm wrong on that. The average was 39.3. Their maximum was 96. So as always, I check the people I'm aware are following this system and everyone got around the between about 53, 54, 55 and very low 60s. So either a very small red or a very small green arrow. Those that have been following it from the beginning, still within the top 5%. So we're still kind of doing all right, I think. 644 subs on this channel. Thank you very much indeed. I do read your comments. I reply when I can. Any likes and also other subscribers, very, very much appreciated. Thank you. So game week 34, we're going into a double game week. And depending on where you are and where you want to be in the league may affect slightly what you want to do. I'd say if you're roughly at the rank you want to be or you're maybe within even 40, 50 points of top or wherever you want to be, don't do anything crazy. But if you're a long way behind where you want to be, perhaps because you join the system later, then I'd say it is OK to be quite aggressive and take a few hits. The reason being, for example, in this double game week we're about to go into, you might, with your current team, be able to score between 80 and 100 points. By taking lots of hits, so you're going to lose points for that, rather than get between 80 and 100, maybe you'll get between 60 and 120. So by taking lots of hits, you are risking getting a considerably lower score, but you may get a much higher score. And without being aggressive like this, you're not going to catch the people a long way in front. If you go aggressive, you may do, but you're also risking falling further behind which is why I'd suggest if you're roughly where you are and you're in the top five percent say I don't think you should go super aggressive 
but it's just a game it's about having fun so it's okay to make subs if you want to how's that, how's that for being vague all right i'm going to show the players and i'm going to show four different cards green means if you can possibly get this player in i think they're a very good choice yellow is this player is a good choice if things can work out for you get them in orange is it's okay to sell this player if you want to free up the money or free up the space this is a good player to sell red is sell this player even if it's for a hit get rid of them so the goalkeepers we have pope de gea ramsdale kepa raya and meslier of those de gea doubles in 34 pope doubles in 36 de gea doubles in 37 and Kepa doubles in 37. But I've gone right off Chelsea. Since Frank's taken over, I think they've had five games, scored one goal. That was a deflection. They let in goals. So even though Chelsea have got a double game week in 37, I think it's fine to get rid of their players at the moment. So it's absolutely fine to not change any of your keepers. I'm just throwing these in there in case you've got nothing else to do and you want to change a keeper or by changing a keeper... It helps with which players you are from which teams, for example. So if you wanted to meddle with your keepers, and I suggest none of you will do, then Kepa is a good one to get rid of if you've got him in favour of, for example, De Gea or possibly Pope. Any of those are OK. It's not worth taking a hit. I think it's not worth taking a hit to do this, doing this system. But I'm just putting it out there so you know you can if you want to. And Meslier, if you want to be freeing up just a little bit of money, and he's probably going to sit on your bench most of the time, he may be all right. But again, only if you kind of really need to. Regarding the defenders, the first page, these are the more expensive defenders of Trippier, Trent, Shaw, Van Dyke, Gabriel Zinchenko, James and Chilwell. Trent doubles in 34, as does Shaw, as does Van Dyke. Trippier doubles in 36. Shaw doubles in 37, as does James and Chilwell. So what we're going to do with these. Trippier is worth getting. If you've not got him, try and get him in. If you can get Trent without breaking your team, he's worth getting. Apart from those two, Shaw is a good one to have. Gabriel is a good one to move on. So if uh, you've got nothing else to do or you fancy changing one of these defenders, Gabriel to Shaw, Gabriel to Trippier or even Trent, they're all good. Same with Zinchenko, he's fine to move on. If you have James, get rid of him. Even if it costs you minus four to get rid of him, get James out of your system. He's not playing again this season and you can swap him for Shaw or maybe Trippier. So that's an easy one to sell. And even though Chiwell's got a double game week coming up, absolutely fine to be selling him. So if I had two of those four in the bottom row, I would definitely be selling them this week. And we're throwing in stones as a new player that we, you can choose in this system now. 5.5, he's got a double game week coming up. He's worth having. I would put him as probably a green or a yellow. Probably a yellow, so maybe equivalent to Shaw-ish. So I would prioritise Trippier or Trent probably over stones at the moment. And the second page of defenders, we have Konate, Estupinan, Botman, Fafana, Me, Pinnock, Aguard and Castagna. Of these, Canate doubles in 34. He's missed the last couple of games, I think. But Klopp implies that he's back and he should be okay now. Estupinan doubles in 34. Aguar doubles in 34. Estupinan doubles in 36. Botman doubles in 36. Estupinan in 37. Oh, and Fafana in 37. So for this page, these are much cheaper. You're not really going to be freeing up much money by selling any of these. So you'd only sell these really to be freeing up the space for somebody else. If you can get a stupid nan and you don't already have three Brighton players, he's worth getting. Canate is nice and cheap. And if you haven't got three other Liverpool players and it helps you do something else in your team, he's fine to get. Castagna is quite cheap. He'll normally be on your bench, but if he needs to come in, he is quite attacking. I think he's all right to have. It's fine to get rid of me and Pinnock if you want to free up some space so you can put another defender in. But if you keep them, that's also fine this week. They could well get a clean sheet at home to Nottingham Forest. Forest can't score away from home. Midfielders, the expensive midfielders. We have Salah, Fernandes, Grealish, Rashford, Saka, Gakpo, Odegaard and Madison. Salah doubles in 34, as does Fernandes, Grealish and Rashford and Gakpo. Fernandes also doubles in 37, as does Grealish, as does Rashford. So on this page, 
If you can get Salah in, he's absolutely worth getting in. Don't break your team to do it. I don't make four transfers just to get Salah in. But if there's an easiest way to do it, he's worth having. Rashford is definitely worth having. Try and get Rashford in. He keeps scoring points. You're going to get very hurt if you don't have Rashford. Apart from that, if you can get Fernandes, he's very good. As is Grealish. If I could have either of these easily, I'd go Fernandes. But he is more expensive, so Grealish is absolutely fine. Gakpo is also good, playing as a striker for Liverpool. And he's down as midfield. Any of those three yellow ones are fine, but I'd prioritise the green ones if possible. But it's your team, you do whatever you like. Saka, Odegaard, Madison, they're all fine to move on to free up some money and or free up some space. There's cheaper midfielders. We have March, Matoma, McAllister, Martinelli, Gibbs, White, Jensen, Somerville. Of those, the three Brighton boys have double game weeks for three different weeks. So, obviously, getting three Brighton players. March and Matoma, slightly better at the moment because we don't know for sure if McAllister's going to be playing defensive or offensively. So, McAllister's a bit of a gamble, worth having, and he's bound to go back as being attacking at some point this season. But if you had a stupid man and two midfielders from Brighton, I think it should probably be March and Matoma. Of the others on here, Martinelli's fine to get rid of and move on. Gibbs White's good in attacking, but if you need the space, you can move him on. Same with Jensen and Somerville. So Mar Martinelli, you could move on to get the money and the space. The other three, you'd only move on to get the space. But they're absolutely fine to keep. For the forwards, the expensive forwards of Haaland, Kane, Tony, Darwin, Jesus and Felix. Uh, Haaland doubles in 34, as does Darwin. Haaland also doubles in 37, as does Felix. You really want to have Haaland. If you haven't got Haaland in your team, you really want to try and get him in. And he is almost worth breaking your team for to get him in. Of the others, it's fine to move Kane on. He's going to free up a lot of money. And I did originally when I made this last night, late last night, I said we can also move on Darwin because he's just not getting the minutes, even though he's got a double game week. However, Klopp's come out today and it turns out that Jota, who has been playing up front, has got a back injury and he's a doubt. So I did have this, I did have Jotras coming in as a possible player, but because he's now a doubt, it's not worth bringing in a player that might not be playing, and also suddenly Darwin's a bit better. So if you don't have Darwin, do not buy Darwin, I'd say. But if you've got him, you don't have to try and get rid of him. But if you want to get rid of him to free up some space and some money, that's fine. Jesus, absolutely fine to move on now, free up some money in space. Felix, even though he's got double game week, Chelsea can't score. I'd say he's worth selling and getting the money. Of the cheapest strikers, we have Watkins, Isaac, Ings, Johnson and Bremo. Ings doubles in 34, Isaac doubles in 36. It's worth bringing Isaac in. You don't need to do it this week. And it might be if you do, you can't manage to play him anyway because you've already got 11 other players you'd rather be playing. But Isaac on this page is the one you want to be having. So for example, if you have Kane... You might want to sell Kane, buy Isaac. That frees up some money so you can buy Fernandez, for example, just throwing in names here. So if you want to sell Kane, Isaac might be the player you want to go for. Watkins is okay to sell. Watkins has been very, very good the last several weeks, but he will free up a little bit of money. And of the others, there's no need to sell them. They're not really going to free up much in the way of money unless you're absolutely desperate for the space. But I don't suppose that would be the case with any of you. So the bench, what we do for game week 34, we look at who to put on the bench and then that determines who you're starting 11 to be. So for the goalkeeper, if you have Kepa, I suggest you put him on the bench. Otherwise, if you don't have him but Mesley, he's on your bench. If you have neither of those but Ramsdale, he's on your bench. None of those but Raya, he's on your bench. Then it'd be Pope. So if you've got De Gea, who's got a double game week, he will be playing. I'm now going to show you, I think, 16 players and the last few of these I'm showing you may well get a score this week and do all right. So we need to put someone on the bench. So this is the order I'm suggesting. The first player you see goes in position three. That is the first player you see that you have. Second player, position two. Third player, position one. And of course, you can only do legal combinations. You can't put, for example, three defenders on your bench or three forwards on your bench. So if you have James, sell him. 
So he shouldn't be on your bench because you should be selling him. But if for some reason you decide not to sell him, he goes on your bench. Next option would be Fafana, Somerville, Chilwell, Jao Felix, Jensen, Gabriel, Zinchenko, Gibbs White, Pinnock, Odegaard, Castagna, Me, Botman, and Bremo, Martinelli. Now, Brentford are at home to Forest. So, Embremo, Pinnock, maybe even Jensen, they may get good scores this week. But someone's got to go on your bench. And you need to make sure that anyone who's got a double game week, they're definitely playing. If after this page you haven't got your bench full, then I'd say put your cheapest defender who's got a single game week on the bench, but not Trippier. And after that, put your cheapest outfield player who doesn't have a double game week on your bench and if somehow you've got if you've got too many players they've got double game weeks you may have to end up putting a double game week player on your bench but I don't suppose any of you really be in that position regarding captaincy for this week if it was me I'd be putting the old mule hat on Haaland so if you have Haaland and hopefully you have I think he's worth putting the captain's hat on Second choice for me would be Salah. Salah is perfectly fine if you're chasing rank and you think unless you go different you can't get anywhere. Salah's okay. Or if you just fancy playing Salah instead of Haaland, that's all right as well. Just one of these is the captains. They'd be my first choice. Rashford is also an okay captain's choice. And then after that, I'd say if you've got one of the Brighton mids, give them a big floppy old mule hat. So hopefully on this page you've got at least two of these players, in which case one's your captain and one's going to be your vice captain. And if for some reason you don't have two of these players, then just choose your most expensive outfield player who's got a double game week. If you haven't got one of those, then your most expensive defender who's got a double game week. <laughs> this is slightly over my eye. I can't quite see probably. Hopefully that all made sense and you're going to have a good double game week 34. Don't feel bad about taking hits and minus four is absolutely no problem. And if you're a fair bit behind where you want to be, maybe it's time to get take a minus eight if it's really going to potentially help you. But just remember, you could go a long way in the wrong direction. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll try and read any comments before the deadline so I can reply to them. But yeah, I'll try. <laughs> OK, thanks. Bye.